OverDrive is the app that the Arrowhead Library System uses, and we are part of the Arrowhead Library System as Deer River, well, the district is. And so we get orders up at the high school two days a week for paper copies of whatever they order. But you can also do ebooks and audiobooks via OverDrive. So if you've never done this, I'm going to walk you through really quickly. In the OverDrive app, I deleted it so I could walk you through the whole process. Can you do movies through this? Through Sorry. OverDrive? No. Oh. Mm -mm. You can do, like, you do Netflix or whatever. You can do that here in school. Right. Yeah. So it's going to come up to it. The first screen is, um, I already did the first screen. It says you can sign up or sign in. And so for your students, they probably never used the OverDrive app before. So they're going to sign up. And all it asks them for is their name, their email twice. And I, I shared, I think, the spreadsheet with you so that you have all your student emails. So they can type in their email. And I encourage my kids to use the same password that we've created for them that the is the same for their email and for their Apple ID. Use the same one here. It's usually the student number with a capital D, small r. For those students who had more than two consecutive digits in their student ID, it's their first name with a capital letter, 317. So um, it's, those are usually the two that we used. When you get to this point, I just hit sign up. Then I'm going to click up here at the menu bar. And then it's going to ask them to add their library. And so the the library should have, we at the high school have a book of all student uh, ISBN numbers. It's their library number. They can also use their Grand Rapids library card if they have a Grand Rapids library card because it's all the same system. You click add a library and then I would encourage them just to write browse because it doesn't always like to find it if you type it in. Um, United States, then you're going to choose Minnesota. And then you're going to look for Grand Rapids Library. It's not under Deer River. And then the big part is, um, see the little star that's kind of hard to see? They need to make sure not to click on the name of the library yet. Click on the star first, because clicking on the star will save that library on their library shelf. Now, if they're part of other libraries, maybe they have family in St. Paul. Um, they can add different libraries. Any library system who uses OverDrive, they can add on this one. So I have family in Oregon. I can add my Oregon library card number on here. So then I go to search the library. So I'm going to click on Arrowhead Library System. And it's probably going to ask them first what kind of books they like to read, what genres. Um, they can skip out of that. Mine's not going to because I've been in it before. This is what the Arrowhead Library, this is the digital audio collection. So this is not the regular library. If they want to just order a book and they want it in paper, they're just going to click on the return to library page up at the top left corner, and it'll take them back. They can select their book and order it. They come to us on Mondays and Wednesdays, and then I can ship them up here through the interlibrary loan or the mail process. They can this, do that with their, their library stuff here. They don't need an actual Grand Rapids library card. Mm -hmm. They can do it with their number here. And I don't know how that works here. Do you have a book or something so you have access to those numbers? or They're on the cards. Karen's yeah. You can get them from ca the cards. She has Karen. cards. So you could write it down. I have the kids save it on their contacts on their iPad. So then it's, once they put it in their iPad one time, they can click the remember me, and then it remembers them every time on their device. Mm -hmm. cool. So that's the easy, the cool part. This is the display. This is what it looks like. You can search. Yes, it's going to show every kind of digital book that's on there. There's no way to filter that. So if you're looking for just elementary and you don't want things like tarot wisdom to show up, mm -hmm. there's nothing I can do there. But you can have them search upper left-hand corner or upper right-hand corner. There's a search bar. Maybe they like, um, let's do Diary of a Wimpy Kid. So I search Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And it comes up here. So there's a couple different ways that you're gonna you're gonna see. There's the book, and if they're grayed out, it means that they're checked out right now. They work just like a library book does, except that they're never late because the system automatically takes them back when they're due. Right? Fourteen so, days, yep. It's fourteen days, yep. They get two weeks only. Now they can renew it two days before they're notified by email to renew their books about to expire if they want to renew, but that means that they have to be checking their email. Sure. And that's only if someone's not on a wait list. So I'll show you how that works. If it's grayed out, it's checked out. It does not mean they can't place a hold. So if I click on 
this red one up here, it will allow me to place a hold. And so placing a hold just means that I go next on the queue. So when it does come available, I will get an email and it'll say, Dire Wimpy Kid is available for checkout. You have three days to check it out before it goes back in the queue again. So if I place the hold, it'll come up. It's going to ask me to select my library. The only two libraries that should be in here are Arrowhead and Duluth for the digital. Okay, select a library. I'm going to select Arrowhead. I'm going to hit go. And then it asks for my library card number. It's going to take me to this page. I'm leaving my email in there. I've already used it. I'm hitting place a hold. If they've never done this before, it's going to ask them for the email address. So they'll have to enter their email address. Hit place a hold. Now when I look at my app, it's, on, it's going to be listed under my bookshelf. When it becomes available, it'll show there, and then I'll click on it and download it. Let me go back and do... So if they're black here, it means that they're available right now. Kids can check out. I'm going to do this Doctor Who ebook. I'm going to hit borrow. It's just telling me note if you download a title, its return title button will disappear. I would choose here. I'm going to move that up so you can see it better. I'm going to choose the download. It should give you two options. They're either Adobe or they're Kindle. I would choose the Kindle over the EPUB edition. If you choose the Kindle, this is where it takes a double setup because it's going to take you, if they don't already have an account, it's going to take you over um, to Amazon and they have to have an account on Amazon. And again, I have the kids create one using their school email and Apple ID, password, the Apple ID and the password. So um, I would choose Kindle there and then confirm and download. It's going to take me to Amazon. So this is Amazon. It might ask me over here on the right hand side, you see that get library book. I hit get library book. And it's going to ask me for my information. And then this is important. It will not say iPad immediately. It'll probably on their iPad say Kindle iCloud Reader. You want to make sure it says Kindle iCloud Reader. And then you hit continue. If they don't have an Amazon account, instead where it says sign in, there's a little button that says sign up. You'll want to sign up there too. So it's kind of, it's, it's crazy to try and get them in, but it's setting up two accounts. You have to set up OverDrive, and then you have to set up Amazon. So then I go over to my Kindle app, and again, it'll ask them to sign in with their Amazon information. Once signed in, you're always signed in unless you delete the app. And I have a lot of books online. <coughs> So Renee, what's the advantage of Kindle over the EPUB? And it seems like when I download, sometimes things are not available on Kindle. It's one or the other. Some and some aren't. I I encourage Kindle because Kindle I like the interface better. Um, I like the ability to highlight and bookmark and write notes. And I, I feel like it's easier to use than Adobe is. <laughs> okay, you can do all that in Adobe. You, you can, yeah. but I think it's easier to okay. Kindle. That's just my preference. You may have a different preference. Um, you can have your kids do Adobe. That's fine too. Either okay. way. But, and, and there but, are with, some but that with the EPUB, they still have to get an Adobe account, yeah. but same yeah. thing, right? And again, I would just use the same <coughs> account information, that same school email, same password. So down here, cloud and device. You can't see that at the bottom, it's not showing up. So down here, there's a button that says cloud and device, and then that's what it shows. So here's my book. I click on Doctor Who. If you want to do this and know that you can't do it on your own, I do have tech workers. Um, and, if you, and if you notice when it had search, you could specify children's literature. Um, do you see that in the in the search? That, so if you, especially if we teach younger kids, you can filter your search pretty quick, easily too. And what's also nice is I've had some audiobooks that I haven't finished and they expired and I couldn't get them for a couple more weeks. And I was shocked they start right where you left off. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I haven't it, done that. It remembers where you were. 